Hi everybody, Nick Klosky from Honeypoint 3D and today I'm going to go over one of the workflows that we get asked about the most which is how to turn uh, a mesh into a parametric CAD model. Uh, this is the only workflow that I know of that does this uh, inexpensively and in this case free um, and it's really really powerful and we use this uh, quite a bit uh, in our wrapper prototyping. So we're going to be using three programs here, Mesh Mixer, Instant Meshes and Fusion 360. Now one caveat before I start this whole thing is that as we do all of the conversion of this file, Mesh Mixer um, going into Instant Meshes and then into Fusion, Fusion only will do this conversion on meshes with 10,000 faces or less. So if you have some super complex model, this might not be the right workflow, or you might be able to break up your model into different pieces and do multiple conversions. So just want to let you know it's 10,000 faces or less. So let's start here. We have Mesh Mixer with the default bunny. You can do this process on a non-manifold model, uh, but it gets a little bit harder later on. So it's a pretty good idea to make it manifold. So I'm going to click on Analysis to Inspector. You see there's a little uh, blue button popping out of here, or you can just click on um, Auto Repair All. And I'm going to do that and now we have a manifold bunny. Uh, right now this, if you look in the lower right, has 13,000 faces. Um, it doesn't really matter um, what you have uh, coming out of your mesh because the next step in instant meshes is going to kind of remesh your object. So I'm going to click done here and I'm going to export uh, my bunny, but I'm going to export it in OBJ format, so not STL in OBJ. Rabbit tries because we're in triangles right now. Great, I'm gonna go into Instant Meshes now and bring that up. And this is actually a shockingly easy program to use. We're gonna say Open Mesh and select the rabbit tries right there. So the bunny comes in, I'm rotating with my left mouse button and remesh as quads, that's what I want. And target vertex count uh, I usually put this up, you know, quite a bit because, uh, you know, I want to preserve some detail, but it's up to you to figure out what number of vertexes you want, just as long as it's less than 10,000. I'm going to go somewhere around here to 3,000 or so. When you do this, it will ask if you want to uh, subdivide it. You just say yes. So it subdivides it a little bit like this. Um, and then, really, you just click on Solve. You see kind of where these combs go. You have these three features right here that will allow you to edit uh, where these combs go. Um, and there's 36 singularities. You can go and try to figure out, you know, how to smooth out your entire mesh. But for this, I'm just going to click on the next solve button right here. And it kind of puts a, uh, um, a mesh on here. And you can see that there's some little issues, you know, where the... Uh, the quads aren't perfect and those are the singularities, so you can go and use these tools as well to try to fix those, uh, but I don't really need to for uh, this demonstration. Uh, you click on Export Mesh and Extract Mesh. There you go. There is your extracted mesh and save. So I'm going to save this as bunnyquads.obj. And uh, Instant Meshes has uh, essentially turned all of the triangles into quads uh, really, really uh, quickly and efficiently. So now I'm going to go here into Fusion. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to explain Fusion all that much, but I'm just going to show you the workflow that this goes in. Uh, you want to insert this mesh, and if you click on Insert, you don't have a mesh option. So you need to go to Create to Create Base Feature. Now there is an insert mesh option right here. So you go on that and you select your quads object. Um, I selected millimeters, uh, which is what this is modeled in. And there is our bunny in uh, uh, as just kind of like a lump of geometry. You can't do much with it now, uh, but we will soon. So now I'm going to say finish base feature to go out. Um, but you see, I can't even select it, nothing. So here is uh, kind of the trick with this. We're going to go down in the lower right and say, do not capture design history. So now we're not really in the parametric mode. Um, we're in more of a, what's called direct modeling. Uh, but we're going to get back there later, so just a second. So under here, under modify, we're going to go to convert. 
which wasn't there before. Uh, entity, we can't select it, you know, we can't select this, but we have to switch the selection filter here to mesh body. And now we can just click on this body right here and say new body. So again, we just selected the body here, made sure this was on mesh, selected the body, said new body. Now um, Fusion 360 will take you know a, a minute or so to, uh, to kind of do all of the calculations. But then once it's done, all of these quads will be turned into uh, uh, CAD quads. So it kind of thought about it for a second. And now look at this. This is a CAD model. We still have our bunny right here. We could turn off visibility on this and turn on. So this is where we started with. I'm gonna turn off the light bulb here and turn on this. And now this is where we're at. So this is still not capturing design history, but here is kind of an awesome thing. You can right click on this, on the unsaved right up here, which is, or it's the name of your file if you did save it, and say capture design history. Uh, so again, Fusion will think about it for a second, but you will now be dumped back into um, the mode where you can capture design history. So now your bunny kind of gets all of these uh, weird uh, kind of regions on it, um, but this is a full uh, parametric model now. You can go into this, you can edit it, right? So um, just as normal, if you go, um, and say edit feature, you are now in here. You can click on any of these and say edit form and use the little manipulator widget to start stretching this out. Now obviously if you have a very complex model, um, you can you know start to get a lot of uh, performance degradation if it's a super complex thing. But you can, you can do all sorts of things like you know anything that you can do with a T-spline. This is a T-spline, so I am now kind of rotating the head of this. I could extrude things. Um, this is a CAD model. If I go in, um, you know, I say finish form, I can go add in other different CAD forms. This is now a full CAD model that I could export as a Fusion file, a step file, all of that. So hopefully this has been um, a good overview of the workflow and I look forward to hearing your comments and we have a lot more um, you know, targeted content on our website, uh, honeypoint3d.com slash education. We have free exercises where you can try uh, things like this as well as some really high quality training if you want to really get in and learn more about CAD, CAD design, and 3D printing. So thank you so much and I will see you around. Bye-bye.